Welcome to the Signature Sip Podcast, a real estate podcast with myself, John Steingraber, and my beautiful wife, Michelle Pice. Cheers to the beginning of Signature Sip. I feel like now we're back and we have a lot to give. We have a lot to offer. Till this day, by the way, I have to say, the excitement happens the second I land the deal, not when I get paid. It's the art of the deal, it's landing that up. Right, it's the chase. Not only are we going to be giving a lot of wisdom and knowledge and experiences and stories, but we're going to bring on guests. I bartended, babe. So something that you and I have in common, even though... Babe, you bartended for how long? Three months. A day or two? I... Okay, it's a podcast. <laughs> so you were like eating a tosta mista in Emily's Bakery. Um, I think I was having a pastel de nata. Okay, pastel de nata. <laughs> and a galon. And if you're a realtor, if you're an investor, you're going to want to subscribe to this podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the newest episode of The Signature Sip. Today, we have a very special guest, not only a dear friend of mine, um, but more like a family. I mean, Rosa has, we've known each other all of our lives. Uh, she's my sister's godmother. We pretty much grew up together. And today, she is here to discuss why sellers should invest in home staging. So Rosa Gonzalez from So Chic, welcome to The Signature Sip. Thank you for having me. Rosa. <laughs> We couldn't have done a 24-hour flip without her. That's right. Mm -hmm. She was also a huge part of the 24-hour flip. Um, I mean, she turned, you know, she helped turn a, a ugly duckling into a swan and uh, helped with all the finishing touches. And um, thank you because of, of the amazing staging. We were actually able to get a lot of these homes sold. I mean... It, course you know uh, yes. i have to give credit yeah, to credit, credit to, 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 to the renovation. <laughs> you know the renovation as well right but like i feel like staging is like the jewelry right it's the icing on the cake it's the jewelry so tell us about yourself what made you go into staging you did i did it's all yeah, my fault do you remember that you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> was it well I mean, listen. Was it us? Was it us? It was you. Mm. It was when I was with a company for 20 years in interior design in the interior design industry, in the city, right? In the city, um, and then I got laid off, and I think within three weeks, I was planning on actually staying home for six months because I wasn't around when my kids were like I was going to the city every day. I wasn't there to drop them off at school. I wasn't there to pick them up. Um, so when I got laid off, I said, you know what, this happened in February, six years ago. And I thought to myself, I'm going to enjoy the summer, spend it with my kids. And then in September, I'll start looking for something. And I remember I was home for about two or three weeks and someone reached out to me about a property they had staged. Um, and if I can go help them, it was an owner occupied, they weren't living there, but they left their furniture there. So I went there, took a look, look, and I went home, and I grabbed pillows from home, accessories, and I went and took it to the property, and within a week, it was under contract. And I believe I put on Facebook or Instagram, like, something like, you know, just for fun, like, keeping myself busy, and you called me. I did? You called me, and okay. you were like, hey. Why do I not remember that? Yeah, you called me, and you were like, hey why don't you do staging? And I'm like, what? And she's like, you were like, yeah, just do staging. I'll give you jobs. And I think within a week or two, you gave me, you were the one who gave me my first job, second, third. Um, and it just started from there. And six years later, look, Has here we are. Has it been six years? Yeah. Holy crap. Wow. Six yeah. years? Either five or six. No, it's, it's makes six years. Well, I mean, even 24 Hour Flip when we started was a few years ago now. That was already almost two wow. years ago, I Time believe, is, or three. Time's yeah, flying. so it's been six years. Yeah. But it was you. It was definitely you. I, you know what it is? It's, I, I have a really bad long-term memory or short-term memory. I just don't remember things. Um, I, just because we have so much going on all the time. It's like, you know, I never... Yeah, same thing happens with me. People come up to me and they'll I, be like, I hey, you, you, you did this. And I was like... Right. I did? <laughs> I did, yeah, right. And I never... I forget... I forget faces, I forget names, but I never forget addresses. The weirdest thing. Really? Well, I that's your job. You have to remember. Like typical realtor. Who's like, I remember, I remember your address. address. I, don't remember your name, I don't remember your name. When you but, call um, me, just say the address. Don't say your name. Just, just give me your address. <laughs> um, wow, that's a great story. So here you are six years later, and your business is, I mean, booming. Really right. Boom. So yep. tell us about that. I mean, what made you... What do you think makes you different? Because there's a lot of stagers out there, right? Just like there's a lot of real estate agents out there. There's a lot of 
lot of everything out there. What makes you different? What makes you unique? Why do you think that your business um, is where it is? And why do you think people choose you? Because when you got into this business, there were other stagers out mm -hmm. there that were thriving, and mm -hmm. now they're, they shut their doors. I've seen them. They're not even in business anymore. So what makes you last this long? I don't, I don't think it's just one specific thing. I think it's a combination of things. First off, I love what I'm doing. And I think anyone, wh whatever your job is, even at the motor vehicles, right? Like sometimes people like, complain when they go to motor vehicles, like the person was so rude. They're not happy in their job. When you love what you're doing, it shows in your work. Mm -hmm. And I do, and I really, really love what I'm doing, so I put 150% into it. And obviously I think that shows when buyers or even the, the clients who hire me, they walk in and they see that. I feel like that's a job you need to love. It is a job right? you need you, to you love. You have to love You won't it do it right if you don't love what you're doing. You're you won't in do it every right. different type of home. Yeah. Right. You, you stage houses with people's own furniture sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Shuffling things around, changing the lighting, doing this, getting a, a room painted and then, you know, doing yeah. that. You, ha you have to love it. Yeah, you well, do. I think with everything, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, when you have passion, it shows, right? You get yeah. excited, anything, you wake up in anything, not just staging. I think in anything you do. You wake but up it's in a the good morning, example. Excited. To me, it's a good example. There's so many different ways, you know, and businesses that, you know, segue from the real estate transaction, right? Because this is really, if a house wasn't selling, nobody would stage it. Exactly. And there's so many businesses that actually you know, benefit from that. And I think a lot of people don't think about when, oh, I'm going to get into real estate. They don't think of these ancillary different opportunities, you know, like lending or staging or, you know, handyman stuff or home services or home warranty. There's a million There's different so things. There's so many things, yep. You know, but you've been in the business now six years. There's a lot of stagers out there. And it goes to show you that if you love what you do and you have a passion for it and you're willing to take risks and you know put your all into it there's room for you in the marketplace i think a lot of people you know this happens with us with the realtors all the time because we have a real estate school and people are like oh there's so many realtors like is there room for me like to get business there's always and there's always room for you in the marketplace whatever it is that anybody wants to do. If you want to do videography, there's room for you in the marketplace. You want to do makeup, there's room for you in the marketplace. And it's a matter of creating that customer. And you did that by starting obviously with Michelle, because she's a big, you know, she's a big realtor in, in New Jersey, and she sells a lot of homes. So she obviously can, you know, give you a lot of um, business. But then you started also getting business from your social media, right? Started posting. That's what I've seen you know, a big testament, aside from your relationships that you have, it's I think your really social important. media is a big deal. Yeah, it's really important. Especially Instagram. Instagram. And everything on my Instagram is my work. Even if I'm promoting or doing some type of advertising, my banners for when I do events, that's my work on there. So I make a point of never misrepresenting myself. Like anything you see on my page is me. I did it, you know. Right. <laughs> It's, yeah. I make a point, I make a point that what you see on my, and I always, if someone new reaches out to me, I said, go to my Instagram, all of my work is there. Every single job I it's do. It's like your I portfolio. It. It's my portfolio. Having your work shown is so important because I can imagine when you go on appointments, how many people ask you, do they even ask you like, hey, can I see, can I see your work? Do most people ask you or most people don't even most ask Most people don't ask because they've been already referred to me by someone else or they're, they were already following me on okay. social media and then they were like, okay, I need a stager. This is who I'm calling. But most um, of your clients are agents. Most of them are agents, but then there's builders, there's investors. Um, and that's another reason why I think the business is doing really well because I make a point of nurturing all of my, my business relationships, you know? And I can honestly say... When you say by nurturing, what do you, give us an example, like how do you nurture them? Because I think the audience would wanna know, like, I, okay, like... I think it's important... Stay in constant contact? Be in contact, any questions they have, even if I'm not getting a job out of it, then you know what, call me at any time and I'll answer your questions. So I'm, I'm curious to learn, you know, how it actually works, because it's a little bit different with us, right? Because we're just like, hey, you know, I take a video of a property, this is what I want, like staged, and that's it. But like, how does it technically work for you on the staging side? Somebody calls you a realtor, 
most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. Or a seller calls you. Or a buy, yeah, an investor or a, a builder. builder. Or, yeah. Right. So they call you and say, all right, I want you to come over and give me a quote. Is that how it works? So normally I, I think every property is different. So I don't like giving pricing over the phone. Right. Because I don't want no, to but give I mean, you, do you come over. I the go property? to every okay. property, every property. I think it's important to go to every property only because only when you walk into it and you walk through it is when you realize the placement of the furniture, how it should be. And that determines what furniture I bring in right. and what size. So for me, it's really important that even if they they schedule me, say, I want you to do this property. And I say, OK, I'll put them on the calendar. But no matter what, there was one I did on Monday, I did yesterday, two model units. And I still went back there Sunday morning because they were under construction the first time I went there. But I still went back Sunday morning before I picked out everything because I wanted to walk through when all the construction material was out right. and just get a feel of get like, all right, vision. where should the sofa be? Where should the TV be? Like, I have, to, for me, it's important to do a walkthrough. You know, it's interesting because I wonder how much longer you're going to be able to keep doing this because with you being there and you handling it all because what I have found is that you know how do you scale and then once you start getting busier and busier you can't be at all places at all times and I'm sure you probably have lost some business because you were booked right so then you start the question is okay how do I scale you obviously have to hire and train but you know it's never going to be the same right and that's what worries me because I right. do feel like I'm at that point where I, I need to hire. And there are things I could get help in where then I could just focus on the staging. Because then remember too, the client, I can honestly tell you that since I started six years ago, I can tell you that 99.9% 9 of those clients are still with me. And that's a, I think that's a big that's thing, a, that's, right? That's a lot, yeah. That's right. Like well, I your clients also are thing. recurring clients. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's like they were a with, realtor. That right. you help them sell the home fast and for more money, right? And then and then they're gonna keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. but you don't you don't just stage homes. I say you don't just stage homes. You furnish them. Like when you walk into one of your homes, it, it doesn't feel like you just plop pieces of furniture. I mean, you really it feels inviting. It feels like you know what I can spend a week in here because everything is so nicely put together and it's like you furnish them with well, the I think artwork it's the little and everything things. else. It's, it's the accessorizing, the guys. Believe it or not, it's the details. It's the accessorizing. I think. And I'm going to be honest with you. I learned that with 24-hour flip. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot from 24-hour flip because I didn't real. not only did they teach me, the art department teach me a lot of tricks that you can do where it's inexpensive, but it makes a huge difference. Like as far as artwork, I learned so much right. about artwork. With the licensing and everything. Yeah, and yeah. not even that. Sh they taught me like you don't need to go out and buy $200 pieces. You can buy frames and then buy photography and put like there were so many things that I learned and then I learned about accessorizing and how accessorizing I is mean, it so makes it makes so it totally like now when I look at uh, like other stagers and I see and I'm like how could you only put one flower on that coffee table like or my husband jokes with me he's like do you think you need any more accessories but I think that does no, it there's no such thing as too much accessories no but I think that's part of it um and I think I also am very detail oriented. Like I make sure there's lighting, how the lighting is placed. Again, the artwork. Um, I think it's all of those little things that have set me aside from a lot of the stagers in New Jersey. And that's why I keep getting referrals all the time. Um, obviously, when other agents go to open, a lot of work has come from that. From open houses. Agents oh, that go to open houses and, and they, they see the it. work and then and they reach have, out. Are you, do you leave your card and information? I haven't been good with that. I haven't mm -hmm. been good like with that. Your, you should just leave your Instagram. I think I'm going to start doing QR a picture code. frame with the QR yeah, code. But put your yeah. Instagram on there. So you. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're busy, right? You're mm -hmm. working seven days a week. Um, well, six, almost. Seven, almost seven days a week. There was one week I did 10 stages in seven days. Wow. That's busy. Two of them were yours. <laughs> but yes, there were. But, but she knows that when I call, Rosa, yes. I don't care how busy you are. It's true. It's true. You need to <laughs> fit me in because my sellers like to be very last minute. It's with true. Um, so being busy as you are, being married, having two kids, uh, teenagers, right? Mm -hmm. They're demanding. Um, what's it like being a, being a mom, being a business owner, work-life balance? Is there such a thing? There is a thing. Really? I think so. I, 
call me crazy and maybe people won't agree with me, but for me, it comes natural. And I think when you're a mom, it's like the, all of that kicks in, right? And you just somehow subconsciously find a way to do it. Like I have a habit of, I like staging early in the morning. Sometimes I arrive at properties, like we have the truck loaded and ready to go. And we arrive at properties, depending where they are, but by 8.30. I can be done sometimes by 12, 12.30, go back to the warehouse, get ready for the next day. And I'm home in time to make dinner for my family, pick up Evan from lacrosse, do laundry. Like you just, you find a, and it's not that I stuck in my head, okay, now I need to make this work. I think subconsciously as a mother you just, and a wife, like you just, you just figure it out and you make it work, you know? I think I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> she she got me at and being still, done by 12:30 coming home guys, cooking lunch. But listen to me, but I'm also leaving the <laughs> but I'm leaving the house by 6:30 in the morning. Yeah. You have to understand that like my days and start you know, early. And you have Sundays off. And I have I make a well, rule she has of whatever actually, day off that she wants. No, I mean, I try to make a point of being well, off on Saturdays and Sundays. On twenty four hour flip, you weren't off. No, on Sundays. I was, and, and not Saturdays either. And, I guess that <laughs> was, and you, we didn't like that. Like her and I were always like. We were always in the car complaining. You guys were always Saturday, complaining about Sunday. everything. Like I can't we believe we're summer. sitting here. <laughs> we could be out shopping at Short Hills. <laughs> we're just yeah. We, we complained. You guys a lot. complained a lot <laughs> on the TV show. <laughs> really, really you are not made for shows. You're, Actually, wait a minute. You are not made for TV. What? I think anyone you that watched the show what would are, not agree with you. What? Are you <laughs> we are so made for TV. We're just not made for. You're okay. Fine. The, if you if you say made for TV means that you're prima donnas, then you're right. No, babe. This show is very different because most shows you are not working on the weekends and on Sundays. Like you're just not. You know. It's and not it, true at all. That, yes, it is, babe. What are you saying? Most production companies don't work uh, Saturdays and Sundays. How do you know? They don't that? work on Sundays. It depends on the TV show. Exactly. Maybe we weren't made for this type of thing. there was, was one day Michelle knew there was one day I had a meltdown oh, I know. do you I remember was and I was like I was like crying gonna it's gonna pay off Don't worry. <laughs> I she was did. like I did she, she looked at like, me and she's like what's wrong with you and I just started crying she was very upset. <laughs> and it, it, we had microphones the whole time well so it was getting towards company. probably the end of the episodes. I forgot I was oh, Mike oh, so it was towards the end everything she was saying and then when she left the room like Steve Kandra came up to me. She goes, is she okay? I was like, because I was trying to talk to you in Portuguese. I was like, just give her more airtime. Just give her more airtime. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. There was one day. It was, wow. it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. So there was a show, um, speaking of television shows. So there was a sh they I had actually, just when I was thought, or I would think that I'm done with television. There was a show that reached out to me. We've been auditioning for the last couple of months. And it turns out that um, they want to proceed with it. But it was contingent upon um, giving up my rights to another Housewives franchise. And I was like, Run. not interested. Run. No, thank you. <laughs> Run. But I would be into doing another television show as long as it's the right show. See, Housewives obviously wasn't for me. I don't think 24-Hour Flip was for me either. I think no, you, know, you just, it's not your business. It was it was basically my flipping show with you selling the houses. Yes. And doing open houses. <laughs> yeah. That killed me. Because an open house is like, when we do an open house, it's usually so from one to three. Donna. Babe, it's we were there at eight o'clock or nine o'clock to do an open. No, 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 no. Oh no, my no, God. No. Oh my no, no. God. Let it's me so tell early. you what happened. No, no, no. Let me tell you guys. You got really there at happened. nine o'clock to do we your got hair there, and makeup. No, no. We got there eight. We had to do, we had to get there at nine o'clock. I had to go and, and, and help me help stage. you stage. And then I had to go back home, change, do hair and makeup, go back to do the open house. And you're I just know. like. Your life is so hard. It was a lot. Well, babe, we, so Maddie was also really little, and I, I, I wanted to spend time with my daughter. That's it. Like, and there was one day that. you actually had a meltdown too. Uh, one day, one I had day? a, I had a meltdown I, every day. No, but like I, remember, I remember me being there. I think for one, <laughs> for one. It was the house by the lake, wasn't it? That one. You were like, I mean, I'm done. Let's go get a drink. That was like twenty <laughs> times. <laughs> it was a lot. Every we time a, we would come home, she's like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I'm quitting. Just, I'm like, all right, whatever. But it was fun. Overall, it was fun. I like I said, fun. I learned. No, I learned think lot, that yeah. helped me take my business to the next level. Right. It really, and it yeah. wasn't just even about being on the show and and people seeing me and me calling me. It really cha helped me change my style. Not my style, because I think my aesthetic is always, but, but how I do it. it. It leveled you up. It did. 
one hundred percent. That would level day. anybody up. Yeah. That I mean, doing things in a twenty-four hour period. Number one, right? You couldn't see the house. I didn't see finished. it until sometimes twelve hours before. Well, I not had even to pack twelve up hours or before. Lo- yeah, load right? up the you truck. Right. You would come at night sometimes just to get an idea of like the layout, but we weren't even near done because we had, we still had the, you know basically um, a few hours left to go because you would come in the afternoon. Yeah. And then by the time we were done, it looked completely different. Mm-hmm. And then you would have to like, you'd be, and I would change stuff. Be like, oh yeah, the wallpaper's different. You're like, what? And that's what, what color? Right. Why that's did you do what that? made it hard because yeah, obviously regular staging, like I go see the properties maybe a week before, a couple of days before, and there's always something you might need, right? And I have time to order it or go buy it because sometimes there's a right. specific space. I didn't have time for that with 24 right. hour flip. Like we had and to we make would it work. A lot. Right, and things we were change changing colors. all the time. I would go the see The painters it. would mess up. The, they would yeah. buy the wrong color. Yeah. So I mean, it, you were doing it in 24 hours, and things were going to go wrong. Nothing's perfect, right? Yeah. And we couldn't... I mean, we were a little hard on them. Well, maybe I was a little hard on them. We shouldn't have been as hard because it just... Under it the made w- for good TV, though. It did make for good TV. <laughs> it's just, you know, it was a lot of pressure, and the working conditions weren't favorable by any means. And I got sick. I don't know if I told you yeah, this. No, I, I remember sick. when you got sick. I got sick, um, so I, I haven't been feeling great. And then I actually went to a, a functional doctor, and they told me that I have black mold in me. And I'm mm-hmm. like, hmm, I wonder where I got the black mold from. From standing up, from you know, standing around in a house on set for seven, eight hours and breathing all the asbestos and the mold and everything else. So. Yeah, um, let's just say I'm glad it's over. Okay, <laughs> uh, why should real estate agents... Wait, have- wait, can I, can I ask a question here? Yeah. Sure. Um, so I want to, you know, I don't know if anybody cares, but I care. How do the economics of the staging business work? Because I've never understood how you make money. Like, okay. how do you make money in this business? Okay, so... Because right? you, you're constantly buying furniture yeah. all the time. Yeah, you're so right. So I want, I want the viewer to understand, like, you're not... Like, I didn't understand how it worked before. I didn't know if you just, like, went to, like, a huge warehouse that had, like, a bunch of furniture and then you, like, rented it for a few days or a few months or however long you're staging it for. So there's different business models. What's your business model and how do the economics of it work? Okay. So I do know that there's a lot of stagers who don't own their own furniture, right? So, and I had looked into that in the they beginning. Rent. They rent it. Okay. And the costs are astronomical. What you're paying to rent for three, and sometimes it could be more than three months, you can buy that furniture. And as long as you keep it in good shape, one job pays for the furniture, and then you're just reusing and re- rotating it. Um, I'm at the so point... You bu- so you have I, a warehouse. A warehouse. So you have rent for a warehouse. You don't yes, own the I warehouse. Yes, I pay rent. Okay. I pay rent. And then, and then you have a bunch of... Like, how much furniture? How big is your warehouse? Like, what are we talking about here? And how many staging jobs can that warehouse and that amount okay. of furniture do? All right. So first things off, the warehouse, I'm actually looking into maybe looking for something bigger, but my warehouse space right now is 3,000 square feet, and that holds living rooms, dining rooms, um, coffee tables, uh, and a lot of accessories. Mm-hmm. Um, so how many sets of furniture do you have? The, in the warehouse right now or in Total. Total. I mean, out on the street at out different on the houses street, and in your warehouse. Close to 40. Okay, so for, basically 40, 40, houses. 40 houses worth of furniture. Mm-hmm. For a living furniture. room, dining room, like accessories if, and yes, bedrooms. And bedrooms. Yeah. And there's houses that I do. At, like yesterday, I did two, two, un, two townhouses, mm-hmm. three bedrooms each. I did everything. It's a model so it's a, lot of, it's a lot of, I have okay, a lot so of le- beds. Okay, so let me ask you this. So you have 40, about 40 sets of stuff. Mm-hmm. You have a warehouse. Obviously, a lot of stuff is being warehoused in the homes. Hopefully, the right. idea is that they're actually out there. The staged. point is that they're rotating. Right, they're rotating. rotating. You're putting some stuff mm-hmm. back. You're putting some stuff in. Exactly. And how many jobs are we talking about doing with 40 sets of furniture per year? Like, what's the turnover? Is it four times a year, six times a year per set? Probably, about? I'm going to say about four times a year. Okay, so you could stage 150 homes on average per year with that or maybe amount more. of furniture? And then sometimes I might need more, right? Um, so far, it's been working the past couple of months. Like, for example, two weeks ago, you couldn't even walk into my warehouse. There right. was so you much had furniture because everything came back. 
And then all of a sudden, now if you go there today, it's not that full. It's almost empty. But I have more stuff coming back this week. So it was hard in the beginning. I was constantly right. buying, right? right. Um, now I think I'm almost at that point where it's rotating. It's almost at, okay, so three months are up on one, or a lot of them are selling before the so, three months. Right. There's properties I'm picking up within a month. Yeah. You know, because everything's really flying off the market. So now I'm these past couple of months, it's been easy. Like it's been rotating stuff comes back. Okay. This can go to this house. This can go to this house. Right. It's just a matter of changing the accessories. You don't want it to look always the same. Um, changing out the accent chairs or changing out the dining chairs from a certain table I used. But I think I'm at the point now, unless it, and it, hopefully it does grow pick, more pick up, yeah. where I'll need more. But right now it's, I'm at the point where I might need more accessories sometimes or, you know, but the furniture now, I'm at the point where it's rotating and it's already paid itself. Mm -hmm. So that's where you make the but money. But how much money did you spend on furniture? <laughs> over 100000 Well, yeah, I would, I mean, 40 homes. Yeah, over 100000 Okay. And do Definitely. You, I mean, do you buy used or you buy no. new? In the beginning, I did because in the beginning, it was like, all right, you, you were on a budget. To. Now, all of my furniture is brand new. Mm -hmm. um, you guys know, but I don't use fake beds. Like the beds are real beds with, with real, real mattresses. mattresses. Right. Um, but I hate everything those damn fake beds. I know. Because then Someone people goes, jump on them and then they <laughs> there's like, like crates on them. Then they fall. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Or the air yeah. mattresses. The I remember when I started. Forget, they deflate all the time. Yeah, it just doesn't look good. And then you walk in and you're like, "What the hell is this?" Yeah. So that doesn't look good. But it makes I, you think somebody was banging on it. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Before, right. Oh, yeah. Well, you're we're not going to get into those yeah, stories. <laughs> we're not going to get into those stories. But back to you, John. I think once that you, I've reached now the point that I have, my only overhead right now is the, mover, the movers. Right. And it's my and rent. And it's not really overhead because you get paid no. on the job. I get paid on the job, you're, right. You're subbing right. to them. Right. It's a good yeah, business. so, I mean, it's difficult in the beginning. Yeah. In the right? beginning, the, you business. have to, listen, no, I... No, I know, I'm just talking about right. it. Right, the so first there's couple... there's a lot of startup capital. I don't think a lot of people realize it. Like, if you, like, for example, I get stagers all the time contacting me, and I'm like, well, how long have you been in the business? And they're like, well, I just got started. I'm, you know, I'll do it for less money. And I'm like, right. well, how much furniture do you have? And they're like, well, I don't have a lot of furniture yet. And, and it is a big difference because if you can accessorize and really place different types of furniture. Like I have a house in, I don't know, um, Harding, right? right? And it's a, you know, it, it's a certain type of house and I need certain type of furniture. That new person's not gonna have that furniture, right? Somebody that has 40 sets of furniture, you know, and they have a warehouse that they can go just choose and pick and all that stuff is gonna be a very different outcome than somebody that's brand new. So if anybody's watching this, if they're thinking about being a stager, these are things that they need to think about. Mm -hmm. If it's somebody that's a realtor that's watching this, they should, this is what is one of the benefits of working with somebody that's been in the business for a little while that can, you know, really accessorize a place for it to look live, like lived in, right? right? Cause it should look clean, new and lived in. It shouldn't look staged. And that's what I think the differentiating factor is. A lot of houses look staged like in the photos oh they look staged mm -hmm. but if it looks lived in but it's clean and it's nice and it's when you could tell the difference mm -hmm. right when it's fully accessorized or if it's not and it makes all the difference in the world because people pay for that right right an yeah. empty room versus a room with accessories and furniture and yeah. everything is night and day difference they say that the difference between and this is a stat literally from when I started doing real estate. Cause I remember when I came back from California, I was doing a lot of um, hiring of professional photographers and stagers. You were one of the first. Yeah. In, in California back in, I don't know, 2009. Um, and I was doing that on all of, all of our listings for Than Marrow and Paulus Asian and JDS Asian, because I was the marketing director. I was in charge of selling all their properties. And in order to like really stand out from the competition, this is what we did. Right. And there were renovated properties because they would buy them. Right. And we would sell them for them. And I was doing my own flipping as well. And I always believed in staging properties. Right. It was a big thing for me. And professional photography yeah. was a mm -hmm. big thing, too. I don't think back then a lot of people would do it. No. You know, but no, they use their cell phones. Yep. Even back then, they said that the stat was about six percent more. Right. For staging a property. 
I honestly think it's more money. Mm -hmm. I think if you leave a property unstaged, right, you would never know, right? We, you can't, you, you can't A-B test this, right? You can't take pictures, not staged, and then put the house on the market and see what you get. And then, you know, stage it and get professional pictures and accessorize it and do everything. And then put the house on the market and see how much it sells for. And then compare the prices. You can't do that, right? Because you can't put two properties on at the same time that are, you know, on the market. So that are the same address. But I, I from my experience, they sell much faster you have a higher chance of getting multiple offers because people fall in love with the decor, right? And I think I would I would go out on a limb and say the difference, depending on the price point, is probably close to 10%. It's a big number. Yeah, on a million dollar house, it could be up to $100,000 difference, I believe. Well, I can tell you that I, I, I can't even give you a number of how many text messages I get once it goes on the market and they have their first open house how many people have reached out saying, oh my God, we had an open house. We already got above ask, above ask offers and it was because of the staging. Thank you. And I think, again, that's another reason why the clients keep coming back. But I can also tell you how many people have reached out to me saying that the buyers want to buy the full first. contents. Right. That's great. You know, um, the problem that comes with that and it sometimes doesn't work out is that a lot of buyers think that because it's there and it's staging furniture that it's going to be like dirt cheap. Right. And it's not. You no, have to understand have to that I buy it. new. I have to replace it. Mm -hmm. On top of that, like dining tables, I pay someone to assemble all of this stuff. Right. The dining chairs. So there's there's a cost to that. And now you're changing your whole inventory Exactly. List. Yeah. And not even that. And I need my inventory constantly rotating. Right. So if you're going to buy it from me, from me, it has to be worth right. me doing that. Have you done many of those? I've done only a few. With Maybe me. if it's slow <laughs> yeah, if it's slow season, I'll do it. Like right now I did get asked to do that and it was all new inventory and I again like there were counter chairs I think I had paid 500 for and the buyers wanted to buy it. And I told the agent, I said, listen, I just bought them. They're going to have to right. pay what I paid for them. They're brand new. And they were like, we'll give her 150 No, then for that, I'll keep it. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah, I think, it, it I think for the viewers, there's two scenarios where, you know, I've bought furniture. Yeah, you have. Like, and it wasn't all furniture that some of it was new. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You just bought brand new furniture and said, all right, I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to market this property as a furnished property. Um, there's only two scenarios, in my opinion, where that makes sense for the seller or investor, you know, putting aside the stager, right? If you're an investor, if you're a seller, to include the furniture is on small first-time homebuyer properties. Why? Because it's probably somebody coming from a rental and... They might not have furniture or a lot of furniture or whatever. And if they buy a new house, they're going to buy furniture anyway. Mm -hmm. So having that furniture included, if you could furnish it for $10,000 or whatever, it's worth it, mm -hmm. right? Because now it's a selling point and you might get more for the house. And you'll probably get yeah. a, at least a dollar for dollar ROI. And then secondary is if it's an Airbnb. If it's an Airbnb property um, and you're marketing it as a, you know, that area is a lot of Airbnbs. That's when it's a good idea to hire Rosa and actually have her put the furniture in there and you could buy it from her right. or you could buy it at closing if somebody wants it. But I don't believe it's a good idea to ever market your property um, and say furniture is available for sale. It's not a good idea? It's not a good idea because, and I've done it before. And oh, because I'm, I'll make that and include it in the offer? No, because what happens is they distract from making an offer on the house from mm. negotiating the furniture. Right. Uh -huh. It distracts them. They're right. like, oh, well, how much is this table? And you're like, well, this is a nice table. This is $6,000. And they're like, oh, no. You know, I'm, I wouldn't they pay start nitpicking picking So up now it's not about the house anymore. Now right. it's about all the furniture. And it's like you're negotiating furniture when you're trying to sell a house. Right. The furniture was just, I, this was a convenience factor for you to be able to do it, but it turns into, you know, a problem, you know, on the, in the negotiating stage. And it stops you from actually being able to generate the offers that you want to generate. So you either include the furniture, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, the furniture is included, right? It's part of the price of the home, right? Or two, you don't even say anything about the furniture. You just stage the property and that's it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Tips on effectively staging a home. You didn't mention a few of them. Um, accessorizing, artwork, curtains. Any other tips? Curtains. 
new construction, it's not possible to put curtains, right? Because then you have to make holes. And, and yeah. I do have a habit if I walk into an older property, sometimes people have moved out, but they're an older property and they're staging it. If they have rods up, I already make a note to bring shears. Um, because it does add a nice touch. We saw in 24-hour flip. I mean, drapery is difference. the Huge. ultimate yeah. accessory. Um, it's just that to offer that, number one, again, we have to make holes. And Most that's going that. into another, like, yeah, yeah, there's, and there's time, it's time consuming, like, in yeah. making, measuring. And well, that happened to us on 24-hour flip. Right. When you guys would take everything down, and then we'd do the final walkthrough. And there were holes everywhere. And people were like, yeah, it, it looked beautiful before. You had 100 art pieces up and you know the yeah. curtains and everything and now none of that's included so there's holes everywhere so i would have to have my guys come back and, and spackle everything and sand it all down and then repaint yeah. which was hundreds of dollars right to do that yeah so, uh, so as much as it's a nice important. touch it is beautiful it's just it's not it's not worth and it what and about the stickies like just doing doesn't that hold up, it doesn't John. hold up no right? No. It's nice for like a temporary picture. It's or something. nice for the one day or two days, but right. as the weather changes or if it gets too hot, they fall off. Like yeah, it's especially just, on these flips, you're not you're not uh, on these homes that are vacant. You're not putting the temperature. No, at seventy. No, degrees, they either right? get really hot or really cold, right. and then they fall off the wall. It just doesn't look right. Yeah. So I and I try to buy artwork that is not. I actually have these for staging. I, know, I saw, you saw that. It. Um, I try to get artwork that's not super heavy. Mm -hmm. So then like that, I can use just really small nails that once you take them off and I pick up, you don't even notice them. Probably people small, wouldn't even yeah. notice. So I, I also try to be conscious of what artwork I buy um, so that it just doesn't even damage the walls or really make much right. damage. So tips if you're uh, for the homeowners um, that are listening in and they're getting ready to put the home on the market and um, maybe they the house is pretty much staged, doesn't need any extra um items included like what tips can you provide to those listening that's going to help increase roi or at least make it look photo ready all right well most importantly is first impressions right mm -hmm. so a home that's make sure outside it's like you get rid of curb dead bushes appeal? curb appeal because a home that's well kept outside is a home that's well kept inside so you want buyers to just the minute they walk up to the house and say wow they've been taking care of this house um fresh coat of paint some people don't want to do it but it really makes a huge difference especially when you're competing with new construction and everything's white and neutral so i always suggest if there's any like blues or reds or yellows like just do a nice fresh coat of paint um and it's also about clutter like just what when i do home consultations for real estate I always tell people, when you walk through the house, if at any point you have to swerve or walk away from something, then you know it doesn't belong there, get rid of it. Because when buyers walk through any time they have to like, you know, like, oh, wait, I have to squeeze into this space, right. then it feels small. Right. Feels small. So it's always important that you do a walkthrough of your own home and just feel like that you're not bumping into anything. And then also the clutter. If everything is out, if you have your shoes all out at the front of the door, or if on the kitchen counter you have everything on top of the kitchen counter, what are people going to think? There's no storage. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know, if you're a seller and you're watching this, when you hire a real estate agent, you know, and a stager, it's important to understand that you're, you've been living in the house for many, many years, right? You see the house very differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even the way the house smells to you is different than mm -hmm. what other people. So true. Right? You could walk into a house and you don't smell your cats, mm -hmm. but other people smell it. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you're so used to it. And when these professionals are trying to give you advice on, you know, hey, let's make these changes to get you a high ROI, you can't take it personally. A lot of people are very emotional about their home and they take, it personally, yeah. they, they take things personally. And people walk on eggshells sometimes talking to the person about what they should do because we're afraid to offend them and then we're not going to get the business. Yeah, here's I always one have line. that speech though. Yeah, when I do a, I'm sorry, when I do a consultation, the minute I meet the seller, that's the conversation I have. have. I said, listen, I'm not here to tell you that you, you did a bad job decorating your, nothing I say has anything to do with your home or how you've decorated it. It's me walking through as the eyes of a buyer and anything that's distracting me is what we want. We don't want distracting buyers when they walk through. So don't take offense. To, nothing I say has, and usually they, 
right away they're fine and they're taking notes and they know, okay, this is what we're going to do. Right. So I think it's a matter of also speaking to the, the seller and just explaining this is not about, it's about you detaching from the home and no longer looking at it as that, but looking at it as a property, like someone right. that right. appeals to Taking everyone. Taking the emotion yeah. out of it. So I have one line that I always use, um, and actually this mm-hmm. has been helping okay. a lot of homeowners just kind of, not taking it as personal, I'll say, listen, the more you declutter, the more money you're going to get. And they love that. And they're like, okay, great. Where do I start? So, and it's true. I do feel the more you declutter, the more you depersonalize, the more money you are going to get. Because let's face it, people, there's one, you have one shot to make a good first impression. And the first impression begins online. Mm-hmm. Those right. pictures have to be perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and look, there's different types of sellers, right? We've dealt with sellers that, you know, it takes them 20 minutes to go from the kitchen to the dining room, right? Because they have a physical disability or whatever. And those types of people, that's not what we're talking about. No. Right. If they, you know, if you need to sell your home as is and you're, you're selling that property, that's a different story. But if you are of the mindset that I'm willing to prep my home, which is the first step, I need to prep my home to get the highest return on investment. I've lived here, you know, logically, if you think about it, you've lived here for 20 years, let's get every dollar of equity you can out of this house and in order to pull every dollar of equity out of the house we have to spend some time on prepping Mm -hmm. and what bugs me is when i hear sometimes with you or another agent where it's like hey we need to get the pictures done right away we just got the listing today and like tomorrow we're doing pictures i'm like why you've lived here for 30 years and now you're gonna just rush prepping the home what are we doing yeah. Let's squeeze every percent that we can out of this home by prepping the home, cleaning the home, deep clean, right? That's so important. Staging the home or at least prepping the home if you're not going to stage it, decluttering, you know, doing little fixes here and there that are going to bite you in the home inspection anyway. So why not? It's kind of like if I put my car up for sale, am I going to like right now, you go to my car, it's a disaster. Like my trunk is full. I have mail on the floor. I have True water story. bottles everywhere. I have pickleballs. I have pickleball paddles. I have a blanket in the back. I have my daughter's- I can't believe you're even like admitting to this. I have my daughter's car seat in the back with like food in it. Like- You're a disaster. That is not, I would never put my car up for sale. Well, we get it detailed every couple of weeks, right? That's why, but- I would get my car detailed before I put the car on the market. Well, that's a car. It's not as valuable as a house, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. And I don't think people that aren't used to selling homes understand the return on investment Mm -hmm. for, you know, we're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars to stage a property, right? We're talking about thousands of dollars to stage a property, but the ROI is just so big. I agree. You know, I agree. And sometimes not even hiring a stager. I think if, if the real estate agent is really involved, because I'm not going to lie, like I follow a lot of, and some of them are not my clients, but I follow a lot of real estate agents. And sometimes even me, I see photos go up and I'll scroll and I'll see like laundry on the floor, like dirty, like that's not, for me, that's not okay. Because if I was looking for a home, I would just scroll and, you know, so I think it's also important that even if you don't hire a stager, that the real estate agents understand that that is the first impression. So even if you take, if you show up three or four hours, which I do know agents that do that, they'll show up three or four hours before the photos and they're going and moving stuff out of the way so it's not showing in pictures. So I think it's also important that, okay, they don't want to hire a stager, but at least that the real estate agent knows that. Yeah, you're the realtor. You have to control that transaction. Mm -hmm. You have to control the situation, right? And you have to give them a checklist. Like these are the things, all your light bulbs should be working. Right, exactly. Like, I, you know, there's a lot of old homes that don't have lights in the room. They have lamps. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, we we still need, you know, the windows open and the lights open and, you know, um, the lights on. And if the bulbs are out, we got to do that. I mean, it's all these little things. If you're Mm -hmm. not going to stay, it's all about prepping it. And I think people discount that. I think, you know, when, when somebody goes in and you're doing a listing prep presentation, you know, to get hired as a realtor, I think even realtors a lot of times will skip the entire prepping piece. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, we're just going to go through the house and we'll tell you what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's spend a little bit more time on that. 
if you're a real estate agent, because that's a huge part of squeezing every dollar out of the equity that we can, because you know, you've owned this house for so long. What percentage of your net worth is in this home? For most people, it's like a huge part of their net worth. So why are we leaving money on the table here? You know? And sometimes you can even send them a punch list because sometimes people right. aren't prepared to do it right away or they're busy. Of course. If you send them a punch list, punch list and say, I'm giving you a week and a half to, and if every day they have one task to handle, right. then a week later the house is ready. Yeah, or even contractors. Like, you know, yes. we have cleaning services that we give to mm-hmm. people because we walk through the house and, you know, sometimes the house is pretty dirty and mm-hmm. they don't get it professionally clean. Mm-hmm. Like we had this one house you know, her husband passed away. She, you know, didn't really live there anymore. She was like staying with her daughter or whatever. And the house just like, we just left for four days. I came back, right? There's spiders. There's, Mm -hmm. you know, like things happen real quick. Yeah. Like really, really quick. So if you're gone from your house for even a few weeks, right? And you're like, oh yeah, it's fine. I cleaned it when I left. No, No. there's dust. There's Mm -hmm. You know, there's all this stuff going on that you need to get cleaned up because that turns people off. And for a few hundred dollars to clean it Mm -hmm. and a few thousand dollars to stage it, I mean... You get that money back. You get way more than that Yeah, way more than that. So if you're a realtor and you're listening to this, make sure you have Rosa on your (laughs) team if you're in Jersey. If you're you're somewhere else, make sure to get uh, a stager on your team. New York and Pennsylvania too. New York and Pennsylvania, (laughs) okay. She's expanding. (laughs) I, I'm, assu- I'm assuming you're going to start cloning yourself now. Probably. I'm going to try. Well, I don't know, babe. With yeah. those hours, maybe I'll just join. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure you will. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Rosa, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram, okay. obviously. That's the number one platform. So mm-hmm. Chic Home by Rosa. Facebook. But that Facebook is not. I mean, I have a page on Facebook. I thought it was so chic. It's so chic. Home, home by, by Rosa, Rosa that long? Yes. Yeah, so chic home, home by, by Rosa. Rosa. Yeah. On Instagram. On Instagram. Wasn't it so chic. Do you have a website? I just tell everybody so chic, yes. Uh, so chic is www.sochichomestylist.com. Okay. Um, but Instagram is the go to. Okay, That's great. where or everyone No, it's finds so me. chic. It's so me. chic home. That's no, your Instagram. It. So chic home by I'm Rosa. looking at it. Okay. It's All so right. chic home. See? <laughs> I don't even remember. And phone number. Give them your phone number. 973-954-7428. Great. Rosa, thank you so much for having us. Thank this you for fun. having me. I learned a lot. Did you learn a lot? I know you had all these difficult questions about finance. Well, I didn't finish with the economics questions, but that's okay. <laughs> you can still finish if you want. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for watching. And make sure to subscribe on Spotify and YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.